Nine on Your Side's Alexis Fernandez begins our coverage tonight with a Nine on Your Side crime alert at UAMC. Well, guys, Sergeant Carpenter is still here at UAMC in stable but critical condition. I'm told that his family is at his bedside as he recovers from surgery. Now, as for the suspect, as for the gunman who shot him, he is still on the loose, and police need your help finding him. This was the scene today as police went through blocks, houses, and yards searching for the gunman, who reemerged when officers responded to this house a second time after an alarm system went off. They were still standing at the property when a loud noise was heard and one of our officers identified as Sergeant Robert Carpenter fell. Sergeant Carpenter was rushed by ambulance to University of Arizona Medical Center with a gunshot wound to the head. TPD Chief Roberto Villasenor says his condition is good. We don't know if the suspect who shot Sergeant Carpenter was involved in the burglary or if this was just an ambush on the officers or what the situation or motive was at this time. 75-year-old Mary Marino lives near the home. It had to be somebody that knew there was no door there. Police tell her the gunman used her old shed to hide stolen stuff. Yeah, that was a shock to me because I was in the shed just uh, last evening around 5 o'clock because I was putting my Christmas decorations. Um. Neighbors were told not to leave their home unless they had to. Eve Rifkin woke up to loud helicopters flying above. And what has that been like for you as a neighbor knowing that, you know, a suspect is still out there? Super stressful. Really, really stressful. You know, we have a really small child in the house and um, you know the thought of somebody breaking in or being armed is just um, we, we haven't been home. Police say they won't stop searching until they find the person or persons who pulled the trigger on one of their own. We're going to bring all of our forces to bear on this. Um, this is just not something that's going to go away. We're going to find this individual. We're going to apprehend them. Now, police have told us that no one was inside of the home at the time of the shooting. We also have new information regarding the weapon that the shooter used. Police say that the bullet that entered Sergeant Carpenter's school was a large one, at least a 22 caliber. Here's the description police are giving us of the man they saw running away. He's Hispanic, 20 to 30 years old with balding hair. He was wearing a dark blue jersey with a number 43 on it in red. And police also say he may have been wearing a baseball cap similar to this one you see here. Now, if you have any information or heard anything or saw anything suspicious near the area this morning, you're asked to contact to call 911 or 88 crime. Guy. How about the other officers on the scene when the sergeant was shot? How are they doing? Well, Guy, Chief Villasenor has told us that they are understandably shaken up, but adds that they reacted bravely and protected Sergeant Carpenter after he was shot. Alexis, thank you. Police officers are in so many ways like family, brothers and sisters. So when something like this happens, the response is immediate. Not on your side is obtained. The police communication during those frantic moments this morning. And not on your side, Corey Marshall continues our team coverage. Jennifer, it's an inside look at how this morning's officer involved shooting unfolded. It's important to note the officers refer to Sergeant Carpenter by his badge number C12. Take a listen. The audio is eerie. It's real time police communication seconds after Sergeant Robert Carpenter is shot in the head at this home on the 4000 block of Elmwood. Uh, we have 312 down. He has a head injury unknown if he was hit in the head by something. 20 seconds later, another officer asks if they need medical attention. Ten four, come over here with your long gun also. The officer's voices still calm. Dispatch asks for backup. Keep in mind, officers didn't see or know what has happened. They don't know if Sergeant Carpenter is badly injured or how he was injured. The shooter is still on the loose. Hold off the TPD, respond with medic. Two minutes go by. Ambulances and more officers make their way to the house. Just advising, J12 suffered an head injury, possibly BB gun or some type of uh, projectile hit him in the head. Another 30 seconds go by. Backup arrives at the house. They're responding with a long gun. Where do you guys need me? Officers move Sergeant Carpenter, one of their own, away from the house. Advise meds. We're going to move uh, 312 out to Albernon. All of this unfolds in exactly four minutes and 48 seconds.
Obviously, we've summarized the nearly five minutes down to about a minute. And as we mentioned early on, the entire time, each officer remains very calm. It's a testament to their training. Jennifer. And Corey, let's explain to our viewers how we got those recordings. It's an interesting story, Jennifer. A gentleman in the northern Arizona sent this into Nine on Your Side. For some unknown reason, he was listening and recording police communication here in Tucson earlier this morning. It matches up with the timeline that Tucson police gave to us. Corey, thanks so much.